It is Pantoran King who said, Celebrate me now when I day alive. Appreciate me now when I day alive. Nobody say when I live this life, you go to fake I'm for my back. Thus is the 28th day in the month of January 2023. The faithful and the clergy of Kumbo are converging in the Kumbo Cathedral to celebrate Bishop George Nkuo now that he is alive. To appreciate him now that he is alive. Nobody say when he don't live this life, we go to fake him for you back. Welcome to the phenomenal 70th birthday of Bishop George Nkuo. One, 
to look back at what you have done for us, and two, to look forward to what you will continue to do for us. At 70, your birthday gives us two opportunities. One, to look back and see how far you have gone. Two, to look forward and see how far you still have to go. At 70, your birthday gives us two opportunities. One, to come to your years, and two, to tell you that your years count. It has been a lifetime of incidents, a lifetime of stories. It has been a lifetime of hard work, a lifetime of patience as well. A lifetime of integrity, a lifetime of excellence, a lifetime of ups and downs, a lifetime of good and bad memories, a lifetime of firm administration, but also a lifetime of fatherly care. Those who work closely with you know that you know very well how to bite us, but also how to suit us, and then life goes on as if nothing happened. This is your life all the way to 70. In a society that worships youthfulness and people strive to maintain it at all costs, the Diocese of Kuhn celebrates you at 70 because 70 does not mean that it is time to give up living. It does not mean losing interest in the things that have been the source of your joy and happiness. It does not mean that you are being swept away into the corner and left to gather mold and dust until you finally fade away. We celebrate you at 70 because your life is like fine wine. The older it grows, the more treasurable it becomes. At 70, God is still love. At 70, your youth is still eternal. At 70, you are still dedicated to the people of this diocese in the same way you were 16 years ago when you became our bishop. At 70, you still love the church in the Diocese of Kumbu. At 70, you still love the priests, the religious, and the lay faithful of this diocese in the same way you did when you became our bishop some 16 years back. At 70, we still love you as a person and as our bishop. I was a bit frightened when the bishop asked me to preach at this mass for two reasons. I looked at my birth certificate and discovered that even if I multiply my years by two, I will not reach 70. <laughs> Secondly, I realized that the bishop was ordained a priest when I was not yet born. And I was wondering what to say on the 70th birthday of the bishop who ordained me a priest. In spite of my fears, I gathered the courage to write down what I am about to say. Shortly after celebrating his 30th birthday, a man felt disappointed that his firstborn son, who was not living far away from him, never had time to visit him or to write him a message on his birthday. In anger, he wrote him a letter with the following warnings. I hope you will not come, and please do not come for my funeral if you can't visit me on my birthday. I hope you will not write a eulogy, and please do not write one if you can't write me a goodwill message on my birthday. At the end, he gave his son three warnings and rules of life. My son, as long as you are alive, remember the dead, honor the living, and live well. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if we apply these three rules as a diocesan community, then we should remember the parents of our bishop, Pa Ferdinand Kuo and Mama Catherine form of blessed memory. Today, we have come to honor the living by celebrating with our bishop his 70th birthday and to learn from his experience how to live well. The Bible does not present birthday celebrations in a positive light at all. In fact, the two birthday accounts recorded in scripture did not end as birthdays, but as bad days. In the book of Genesis, chapter 40, from 
verse 20 to 22. It is recorded. On the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, when he gave a banquet for all his staff with his courtiers around him, he lifted up the heads of the chief cup, chief cup bearer and chief beggar. He restored the cup bearer to his office so that again he handed the cup to Pharaoh, but the chief beggar he killed. The account of the birthday celebration of Herod, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, ends with the corruption of a young girl and the death of one of God's greatest prophets. John the Baptist is beheaded and his head handed over to the daughter of Herodias. What on earth will the woman do with a human head at the birthday celebration? <laughs> the celebration of Pharaoh's birthday ended up as a birthday for a chief beggar who is killed, as a birthday for Joseph, whose presence behind bars is confirmed. The celebration of Herod's birthday ended up as a birthday for John the Baptist, who is beheaded, and for his family and friends, who have to bury their brother and friend without the head. The birthdays of Pharaoh and Herod were not celebrated as a show of gratitude to God, but as a show of power and wealth. That is why they ended up as bad days. The birthdays of Pharaoh and Herod were not celebrated for the glory of God, but for the glory of these two human beings who had made themselves into demigods. Not as acts of thanksgiving, but as an act of entertainment. They simply used their birthdays as an opportunity to show their authority over their servants. They celebrated their lives by depriving others of their right to life. They made themselves happy by depriving others of their joy. We are gathered here this morning not to entertain ourselves, but to thank God for the life of our vision. Not to glorify the vision, but to glorify God for the life of our vision. To pray with him as he crosses over to the other side of age. Once again, let us cross over with Jesus to the other side. It is evening. The little crew of disciples sets out for the other side of the lake with Jesus. They are moving from the Jewish side to the Gentile side. From the side where they are at home to the side where they are strangers. From the side where life is familiar to the side where life is new, different and unfamiliar. From the side where things are going well to the other side where things are going to get soon and become tough. Not long after they have taken off, they are in the high seas, all together in a small boat. Suddenly, a cold wind comes down from the hill, causing fierce waves that struck them with fear. There is thunder amid blackened clouds, and there seems to be no way forward. The smooth sail turns rough, and their fragile boat seems to be giving into the demands of the winds. At the sight of Jesus sleeping, the disciples cry out in terror and fear. Teacher, do you not care if we perish? When they realize the presence of Jesus and hook him up, he steals the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the tumult of his disciples say, Peace, be still, and the wind ceased, and there was calm. Every life has the other side. The other side where human effort alone cannot sustain us. Every life has the other side. The other side where age weighs down on us and we need God's grace to mourn. The other side where things are difficult. The other side where things are unfamiliar. The other side where we feel like we are sinning. The other side where our troubles seem to overwhelm us. Every life has the other side. The other side of life. When we feel like asking Jesus, do you not care? The other side, where the waves of problems are strong and the wind of difficulties is blowing hard against us. 
Every life has the other side. The other side, where progress is slow and nothing seems to be moving at all. The other side, where God seems to sleep comfortably while we are drowning. Every life has the other side. The other side, where we feel like God does not care anymore. Where fear seems to be the strength to be stronger than faith. And the doubts are more than the trust. The other side, where we feel God's absence more than we feel His presence. Every life has the other side. When we fear the water more than we trust the God who made the waters, every life has the other side. When we fear what is outside the boat more than we trust what we carry inside the boat, every life has the other side. When we fear the strength of the water more than we trust the power of God who is in the boat, what matters is not the storms we encounter as we journey to the other side. It is what we believe about God when we face the storms. Our consolation is that even as we journey to the other side of life, Jesus is there with us to calm the storm. The calming of the storm is not just a story of what Jesus once did in a storm in far of Palestine. It is a sign and symbol of what he always does for us when the winds of life are blowing hard against us. It is a sign and symbol of what he does for us when the storms of ill health rise up strong against us. It is a sign and symbol of what he always does for us when we are in danger of being overwhelmed by the storms of war and the killings that continue to rain in our land. It is a sign and symbol of what he does for us when the storms of sorrow and suffering beat against us. When the storms of loneliness, confusion, disappointment, and regret beat against our faith. When the storms of fear, vulnerability, and powerlessness blow within us. The bad news of life is that there is no life without storms. The good news of life is that we are in the hands of a loving God who is always there to calm the storms. Too often, when the storms come, we want to seek help from ungodly places and people. But today we have come to know that to journey with Jesus in this life is to journey in peace even in a storm. Today we have come to know that the power of God is stronger than any wave that beats against us. Today we have come to know that the love of God is deeper than any water that threatens to drown us. Today we have come to know that in every storm, Jesus is present and his response is always the same. Peace, be still. When we face the storms of sorrow, his presence gives us peace. When life's problems plunge us into the tempest of doubt, tension and uncertainty, he gives us calm. And when the storms of anxiety seek to take away our happiness, his presence brings us the peace of the love of God. When Christ is there in the boat with us, the storm is become a calm. When Christ is there in the boat with us, the tumult becomes a peace. When Christ is there in the boat with us, what cannot be done is done. When Christ is there in the boat with us, the unbearable becomes bearable and we pass the breaking point and do not break. And so to journey with Christ through the sea of life will be for us the compass of the storm. Today, we pray for our vision and we say to God, Dear God, be good to us and our vision. The sea is so large and our boat is so small. Dear God, be good to us and our vision. The sea is rough and our boat is fragile. Dear God, be good to us and our vision. The waves are strong and our boat is weak. Dear God, be good to us and our vision. The temptations are too many and our faith is weak. Dear God, be good to us and our vision. The war is too much and our boat is sinking. Dear God, 
be good to us and our bishop today, tomorrow, and all the days after tomorrow until the end of time. Lead us through on our journey of life and bring us safely to the other side through Christ our Lord. Amen.